Welcome to Voices in Mystery. Our next guest is Peg Herring from Onaway, Michigan. Welcome to the show, Peg. Well, thank you. I know where Onaway is. It's way up there in Michigan where it stays cold about 10 months of the year, I think. But you're here to talk about your writing, and you've brought two books to show us. One is a short story book that are mysteries, and one is not a mystery. Let's, let's see that one first. What's the book that does Macbeth's? Niece. Right. This one is a historical romance, and because I was an English teacher for 30 years, I took the story of Macbeth and invented him a fictional niece. Oh. And she has lots of adventures because she gets kidnapped from Macbeth's castle. So I had a great time with it, and uh, it was a great start for a writer. So let's see, you taught in high schools for 30 years. That's a whole career. And you didn't begin writing until you had retired? Not really. I started writing for my students, actually, and I wrote some plays. And the first one I wrote was very successful, and someone said, you should try to publish that. So I thought, well, all right, I could do that. I sent it off to three publishing houses, and two of them asked for it. So I thought, wow, publishing is easy. <laughs> Boy, were you wrong. I was very wrong. It took years to do the rest of the plays, and then, of course, six years to get Macbeth's niece actually out. And why mysteries? And Tell me about the short stories. The short story book is an anthology, and I'm really proud of this because it's a benefit for Toys for Tots. Oh. And Tony, Wolf, uh, Tony Burton from Wolfmont Press does it every year. And he asked a bunch of us to write a short story about the holidays. And then he put them together and edited them. And then the profits go to Toys for Tots. So you have one short story in that. Yes. And, and set that story up for us. Don't give it away. But <laughs> I would never. <laughs> um, it concerns three not-so-wise men who have plans for several holiday crimes, but they run into a corpse that will not go away. Oh, that's great. Three not so wise men. So is it the Christmas season? Yes. Oh, I get it. And do you have a toy in your story too? Is that no, a requirement? That for was the not NFL? a requirement. It just had to be Christmas, Hanukkah, or um, Kwanzaa. Yeah. And I got all three in. <laughs> Way to go. And it didn't have to be the radio flyer or a no. BB gun or <laughs> anything like that. How did teaching high school serve you as rich storytelling content for your future? Do you, you had a, a lot of students pour through your classrooms in those years. I think it's a great preparation. Um, certainly you see lots of different kinds of writing and uh, you learn to edit and you learn to look for the good and the bad. But I really didn't see how much my own writing was going to have to change to become a published writer. So there was a lot of good preparation, but I think the actual writing can't be replaced. I think you have to do that all by yourself. <laughs> Do you do your research mainly on the internet, or do you get in the car and drive, or what? What? How do you do that? A combination. My ideas come a lot of them in the car. Really? Um, yes. The uh, research. I've been to Scotland. I've seen the places that I write about. I tell my husband that we have to go back because I might want to write another book. <laughs> and um, then I do a lot on the internet because you have to check your facts. You have to know exactly when Macbeth lived and died and that sort of thing. How many times did you assign Macbeth <laughs> to your high school English class? Well, uh, 30. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew the play pretty well. Yes, I'm very well acquainted with the play, but of course it's nothing like reality. Macbeth was actually a pretty decent king. He didn't ever kill anyone. His wife was a pretty nice lady <laughs> who never told anyone to kill anyone. So I had to decide, was I going to go with Shakespeare's version, which is kind of a hatchet job, or was I going to try to tell the truth? And I caved. I went with Shakespeare's version. <laughs> <laughs> Better storytelling? Yes. <laughs> and at the end, I have a note that explains the difference between reality and what Shakespeare wrote and why Shakespeare chose to do that. How did you see students changing in 30 years of teaching in, in regard to English, writing, and reading? 
the better students are always there and they're always wonderful to work with but I think we do see less reading nowadays and less willingness to write however the computer helps with that because it's not such a painful job for a, a student who can't spell or can't write to uh, word process. So that helped, actually. Does the, the language of text messaging bother you when you <laughs> see the, the d does any of that appear in the student papers when you were a oh, teacher? Yes. That, that we're instead of Y-O-U, they yeah. use Why do I have to say Y-O-U? They know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, you think about it, though, they, it makes a lot of sense. You know, sometimes we have uh, vowels that are not necessary in our words that so we should, maybe should read. And if you go that. back to Macbeth's time, we did say those vowels. You know, the word night was pronounced kinyekt. Really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so every letter in there was at one time for a purpose. In your future, are you thinking of taking other well-known Shakespearean plays and inventing nieces or nephews, <laughs> or, or, or is that going to be a, a plan? Um, not really, although it's a great idea. Um, I have two other books that deal with uh, my, the mystery that I have coming out in 2010 is, deals with Elizabeth Tudor. Mm -hmm. And my plan is to start with her as a young person and then do a book on each a section of her life when she's a subject of her brother, a subject of her sister, and then as a queen herself. So I'm still in that same era. Um, the other book that is under consideration right now is another sort of Macbeth tie because they it's a modern story, but they find an old Macbeth script that has some secrets to it. So that's more of a mystery than a yes. romance. I consider myself mystery. It's just the romance sold. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of go where the, the money is, well, too. Yes. And, and so you'll stick with that then, the mystery writing? I believe so, yes. And what's the difference for you in writing a short story and a novel? Well, how did you? Short stories are just fun. And when somebody says, you know, you could be in this book or you could win this prize, it's not a lot of a time uh, commitment to write a short story. You can figure, okay, three weeks from now, I can have it written and edited and gone. Where with a novel, you have the idea, but are you willing to put in the year that it's going to take to bring it all the way to ready? Is that what it took for you, a year? <sighs> People always ask, and I never can say, because I have to put it away once I've written it all down. Um, and before I can do my own editing, I have to leave it for maybe six weeks oh. and not look at it. And then I'll go, oh my goodness. That's the gestation yes. period. Then. <laughs> and it gets better after that. <laughs> Well, I, uh, it must have been a success because that's the one that, that got picked up. I wish you a lot of luck from, uh, from me to you on your next efforts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to say goodbye now, but thank you so much for coming to Voices in Mystery and being on our show. We've been visiting with Peg Herring from northern Michigan, but she came to the show and we're glad to have her. And she's the author of Macbeth's Niece and has a couple other things cooking. So uh, watch for her on, uh, on your, at your local bookstore and to come back to the show often. Thank, Thank you. you.